last time on the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. We're still in this series. Well, we're actually in a few series, but right now the Lord is using me to deal with uh, the depth of the biblical method of prayer. And this is volume three. But now, okay. since the people of Israel are so afraid of the Amalekites and the Canaanites living in the valleys, tomorrow you must turn back into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, and to Aaron, excuse me, how long will this wicked nation complain about me? For I have heard all that they have been saying. Tell them the Lord vows to do to you what you feared. You will all die here in this wilderness. Not a single one of you, 20 years old and older, who has complained against me shall enter the promised land. Only Caleb son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun, are permitted to enter. Psalms 119, verse 89, Scripture says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He said it. He meant it. It stood then, and it stands. And now, now back to our program. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. being used by God as the Apostle, the Teacher, and the Prophet over this ministry, the Word of God through Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask you to join with us today for a very informative and powerful show. Please bring pens, uh, some paper to take notes, and your Bible so you can follow along with me in Scripture. And this might be one of the shows where I have one of my friends with me that are also in the Gospel. This ministry networks with a lot of ministers, and the Lord uses this ministry to even give ministers a chance that no one else would give a chance to. So today is going to be a very powerful show. I don't know what God is going to do today, but we are going to find out. The ministry's website is right here, so that way you can go on the website and you can check it out and you can feel yourself around and, and, and look, look on the different features of the ministry's website. Don't forget to sign the guest book and just enjoy yourself. We love you. This ministry loves you so much. And the ministry's phone number is 475 300 Three eight five zero twenty four hours. You can call for prayer, Bible questions, or whatever. But in the meantime, let's go back here and get into the Word and see what the Holy Ghost would have us to study. You see all these books behind me? Come on, let's go. Let's go into the library.
And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you, saints. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ. Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. And I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles. Let's quickly get into this and turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 14. While you're doing that, I'm going to pray over the lesson. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray over this broadcast because we really got to get into this. This is very powerful. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Thank you for gathering us together. Thank you for handpicking us and putting us before you. Thank you for choosing to minister to us, to reveal your will, your word, your way unto us. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you that you're not leaving us in the dark. Thank you, oh Lord, that you are addressing our issues, our concerns. And I ask, Lord, that you feed everybody watching, whether by television or by social media or by YouTube or any other way, even if they're just listening by audio CD or audio cassette. Please, Father, please minister to us. In Jesus' name, allow me to decrease that you may increase. Satan, we rebuke you and we plead the blood against you in Jesus' name. And Father, fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word, yet you do the teaching. Again, allow me to decrease that you may increase. And thank you for the technology. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. In John chapter 17... Notice I got to stay in the word. In verse, in chapter 17 and verse 17, Jesus was praying. Uh, he was interceding for the apostles. And in verse 17, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So you can only worship God from your spirit and according to his word. If you go off the word at all, then you will not be worshiping God. You will be worshiping someone or something else. Because the word is what keep us in line. Look at Psalms 119 verse 89. None of this is written down in front of me, but it's written between the covers of the Bible. Psalms 119, verse 89, Scripture says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He said it. He meant it. It stood then. And it stands now. Moses was a prophet. Not a prophetess. Because in scripture, prophetess means an inspired woman. Prophet means an inspired man. So there's a lot of Sisters, or women, uneducated, unlearned, silly women. Silly meaning immature. Who called themselves a prophet. You are not a prophet. I was talking to a, a, a woman earlier who called. We, we were talking on the phone and God was telling me to speak with her and listen to her. And I was wondering why he was saying that because I know the season I'm in. I'm in the season where I'm waiting for God to to bless me to enter into the covenant of marriage. Now he, he blessed me to have my 
eye on someone, but they're dragging their feet. And I'm talking to God about it daily, and he just keeps saying to me, I'll deal with her. You just keep walking with me and working for me, and I just have to obey him. So earlier, the Lord was allowing me to talk to a sister, to fellowship with a sister. And before even going in the conversation, I was led by the Holy Ghost to ask her, can we pray first? Because that's how I get that. I'm going to pray because I need God to be in the midst of this conversation so the enemy don't creep in or sneak in. And she began to tell me all about herself, saying how her gift is rare, when I don't know how your gift could be rare, when there's a fivefold ministry, and the fivefold ministry was established before she, I, or anybody else was born. Even though the Lord put it in the body in the New Testament, the fivefold ministry was already planned by God before the foundations of the earth were laid. So your gift is not rare. It's only rare to those that have never seen the realness of God. So she began to tell me, well, I'm a prophet. Because the Lord led me to address her as prophetess. Because I saw. And the Lord led me to tell her. You know, God said that you, you have the gift of dreams and visions. You're a visionary. Yeah, that's true. Well, praise the Lord, prophetess. And she said, well, I'm not a prophetess. I'm a prophet. And the Lord led me to tell her. The Bible says that a prophet is a man. And when it comes to a woman being under the prophetic mantle, she's referred to as prophetess she she didn't want to accept that then she says to me now now see when god bless you to be a teacher a lot of times you can't just blurt out everything you know you got to sit and let a fool be a fool and i sat and just let her talk and let her go on and then she said you know prophetesses didn't start until the new testament and the Lord had already led me to tell her that you don't know me, but I know you. Why? How? Why? Because I know your anointing. And God uses this ministry to cultivate the gift of those in ministry. So I, I understand the fivefold ministry also because apostles are the only brethren that walk in all four of the other offices according to the Holy Bible. So the Lord let me to tell her, well, I understand your gift. I understand it. And, and because apostles are teachers and preachers, or a teacher or a preacher, depends on the apostle. This one is a teacher and a preacher. But, but the teaching anointing is on my life strong, praise God. Because in order to preach, the Lord has to use me to go into the word and pull out truth from the Logos so that the Logos actually steers the rhema. So she said, prophetess is only started in the New Testament. And the Lord let me tell her, no, that's not true. The prophetesses were in the Old Testament as well. No, it wasn't. I study and blah, blah, blah. The Lord let me ask her, do you have a Bible? Go ahead and tell me. No, get a Bible. Because I want you to see this. God wants you to see this. So now I'm understanding why the Lord is blessing us to talk. Because God wanted to check her. He wanted to, to settle her. He wanted to impart something to her. But there was blockage there. One, because all she kept saying is, my spiritual mother. Why are you lifting up a male or a female? <laughs> Why? Then she talked about covering, which she used that wrong. Then she talked about accountability. She used that wrong. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Brother Paul said these words starting at thank you lord he said going to the living bible because that way everybody be able to understand it clarity 
is very important, especially at this season and right now. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 1 in the Living Bible. Brother Paul said, Dear brothers, I have been talking to you as though you were still just babies in the Christian life who are not following the Lord, but your own desires. He said, I cannot talk to you as I would to healthy Christians who are filled with the Spirit, capital S. I have had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. And even now, you still have to be fed on milk. For you are still only baby Christians, controlled by your own desires, not God's. When you are jealous of one another and divide up into quarreling groups, that means a clique, doesn't that prove you are still babies wanting your own way? The sister, the Lord blessed me to have my eye on. She hangs in a, a group. There's a group of people she'd be around. And God already told me she needs to get away from them. Why? Because they are not able to be used by God to share anything with her, to cultivate her gift, or to encourage her gift for the next level. So she's going to stay on that level or wandering in circles until she capitulates to God. She said to me, she follows God. Well, follow him then. God don't walk in circles. Paul said, as the Lord told him to write, in fact, you are, you are acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all. There you are, quarreling about whether I am greater than Apollos and dividing the church. Doesn't this show how little you have grown in the Lord? Who am I? And who is Apollos? That we should be the cause of a quarrel. Why? We're just God's servants. Each of us with certain special abilities and with our help, you believed. My work was to plant the seed in your hearts and Apollos' work was to water it. But it was God, not we, who made the garden grow in your hearts. That means in your spirit. The person who does the planting or watering isn't very important. But God is important because he is the one who makes things grow. Apollos and I are working as a team with the same aim, though each of us will be rewarded for his own hard work. We are only God's co-workers. You are God's garden, not ours. You are God's building, not ours. God, in his kindness, has taught me how to be an expert builder. I have laid the foundation, and Apollos has built on it. But he who builds on the foundation must be very careful. And no one can ever lay any other real foundation than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. This woman mentioned her spiritual mother. <laughs> And the Lord led me to tell her, what about God? Why are you lifting up a person? See, I don't promote that because God doesn't. He don't promote that. Oh, yes, he do. No, he don't. Who is Isaiah accountable to? The ministry's number is 475-300-3850. You have a problem, call the ministry number. You got an issue with what God is telling me to say and showing you in the word, call the ministry. Let's talk about it. Let's daw bar, as it says in the Hebrew. Who is Jeremiah accountable to? <laughs> Who? Who was, who was Ezekiel accountable to? Who was Moses accountable to? Thank you, Lord, the way he led us. Right back to Moses. Accountable to God. Sure, it's good to fellowship. Hebrews 10, 25. Scripture says, it's, it's very good to fellowship. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, 
verse 25, Scripture says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So this, let me throw this nugget out there. So when the governor, the mayor said, close the ministry, close the place of worship, you can only have three people in there, whatever. They, they don't have jurisdiction over the place of worship. And if you let them have jurisdiction, then you might as well hand them your collar, your robe, the keys, and everything else, and you might as well let them run the ministry because you are following them, not God. Whoa, wait a minute. What about the coronavirus? Oh, that demon? Yes, that demon is very powerful and taking people out. And while people are, ex are, are blaming uh, uh, the world's president, Donald Trump, for creating the coronavirus. He didn't do that. That is, that, the coronavirus is a demon. A demon. A spirit of sickness who, who is teamed with the spirit of death. All right. So those in leadership should know this truth right here. There's some that have supernatural faith. And there's some that don't. The ones that don't, let them stay home. And they can fellowship virtually. <laughs> like everybody is doing now anyway. But those that have great faith. Those that can stand in the face of adversity. Those that the Holy Ghost is with. Those that live and stand on no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. They can come to the ministry and fellowship. I didn't say the church because the church is not a building. We are the church. But let them come to the place of worship for fellowship. Numbers chapter 14. The great rebellion of Israel. In the Living Bible, verse 1, Scripture says, And all the people began weeping aloud, and they carried on all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of complaint against Moses and Aaron. It's sad that Moses went through so much because of the people. He went through a lot. He was a prophet of God. And his mission was to lead the people out of bondage. His, job, his, his, his mission or his, his uh, assignment by the Holy Ghost was never to bring the people into the promised land. Because of, if it was, he would have done that. But that wasn't his mission. His assignment was to bring them out of bondage. Some may say, well, how can you say that? Well, now let's talk about the character of God. God, who's all-knowing, knew what Moses' limitations were. That's why when, when, when God told Moses what to go tell Pharaoh, and Moses said, but I have a speech impediment, God responded, didn't I make the tongue? So, so, so God was not caught by surprise at Moses' fear of going forth. He wasn't surprised. He's God. He's God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wait a minute. Okay. Yes, Lord. He's God. So what he did is before the foundations of the earth was laid, God already put together the leaders to get his people from point A to point B. He already put it together. He already did.
in Numbers 14, I'm looking for something. That's why I'm taking, uh, I'm, I'm looking for something here. There it is. Okay. Thank you, Lord. While we're in Numbers 14, go over to, to Numbers chapter 20. Hold that Numbers chapter 14, though. Go over to Numbers chapter 20. And let's notice verse 1. I'm reading out of the Living Bible again. The people of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin in April and camped at Kadesh where Miriam died and was buried. There was not enough water to drink at that place. So the people again rebelled against Moses and Aaron. Now remember Moses was a prophet, not a prophetess. He was a male, he was a prophet, an inspired man that had a connection with God. And Aaron was a priest, which is equivalent to pastor which goes to show that pastors assist the prophet. It don't go the other way around. Even though God will send a prophet or a prophetess to help a pastor, and is God using the prophet or the prophetess to, to, to share words of wisdom and words of knowledge with the pastor. And a lot of people believe that all prophets do is prophesy. Oh, I, I prophesy all the time. All right, so you feel obligated to perform or entertain? <laughs> the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, plus to give uh, or, or and the discerning of spirits to stand in the office of prophet or prophetess, you must have two of the Revelation gifts, two, at least, a consistent manifestation. And the three revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Now, the word of wisdom is supernatural. Revelation by the Holy Ghost concerning the divine purpose in the mind and will of God. And it always speaks of the future. To be wise, the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge is supernatural revelation by the Holy Ghost of facts in the mind of God concerning people, places, or things, and always present or past tense. So a lot of times, people who are unlearned about the prophetic mantle that they're under or that don't understand the prophetic office they're in, they will confuse the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge with the gift of prophecy. And you can't do that. You'll lead people right into a brick wall. And then God will deal with you. Discerning of spirits is supernatural insight. Seeing in the realm of spirits. In the spirit realm. Seeing. And hearing. In the spirit realm. So now. A person who's called by God. Into the prophetic office. Must have. A more consistent. Manifestation. Of at least two of the revelation gifts. Plus prophecy so you got unlearned leaders trying to educate sheep babes and they follow that because they wouldn't know a real prophet or a real prophetess if they ran into one some people call Juanita a prophetess. She, yeah, she's a fallen one now. Some people call Benny a prophet, a fallen one. 
Yes. Some people call Jamar Bryant a prophet. He's so carnal, using psychics' words and passing them off as being from God. Yeah, he did that. Look it up. That's a good thing about the era we're in. Instead of using the internet to look up a Bible, look up these people that you are lifting up. And you'll see that not only are they just as human as you are, but you probably know more than they do. Because when, when people get to a certain level of comfort in life, then they don't feel that they need to sit before God anymore. You're getting a $30,000 offering every day or once a week. A lot of these uh, 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 explosions and revivals and these, even on Facebook, these flyers of people standing there with their arms crossed. What, what does that mean? So you're doing that and got all of these guest ministers, half of them in the wrong office. Women elders, women apostles, women bishops, women pastors. What word are they coming with and from who? Not from God. Because in here, you will not find such nonsense. The people complained against Moses. But we're in Numbers chapter 20. Verse 2, there was not enough water to drink at that place. I'm in the Living Bible. So the people again rebelled against Moses and Aaron, against the prophet and the pastor. A great mob formed. People that don't even get along will team up to laugh at you or go against you or talk against you. <laughs> Setting up the stage for God to light them up. And they held a protest meeting. Would that we too had died with our dear brothers, the Lord killed, they shouted at Moses. You have deliberately brought us into this wilderness to get rid of us along with our flocks and herds. Now a lot of times when people challenge your anointing like that, for them to go, if they really believe this, they didn't have no discernment to see this ahead of time. And if they did, then they went. So what does that say about them? Some sisters marry a man and then the, a divorce comes. He smack her up or whatever. Or yes, okay, God said he smack her up or whatever. And then she tells everybody when they say, wasn't you married? Yeah, but he wasn't no man of God. He wasn't no believer. He smacked me up. Well, you supposed to be so deep. Didn't you see that before you got with him? Same thing with brothers. Oh man, she, you marry her. Y'all had the ceremony. Y'all are in covenant. And then all of a sudden, y'all are not in covenant no more. And people say, weren't you married? Y'all not together no more? No, nah, she's evil and like to fight and argue and fuss and all of this. Well, didn't you see that before y'all got together? Now, there are some times that God will show you this about a person and still say, accept him. I know some people say, no, he won't. What about Hosea? Hosea married a whorish woman. And God told him to. But there was a point in that because Hosea was a prophet, first of all. And so his life was supposed to be an example to the people of God and to other people and to us so that we can read about what he went through kids being brought home and scripture only mentions only says that she gave him this child but the other two it didn't say that god even said those are not mine he gave him a name that meant this is not mine it's important people will team up to go against you and if you're a chump if you're a wimp if you're scared it'll bother you but when you walk with God, that don't bother you because you know that the Holy Ghost, he's leading you and living in you and he's going to fight your battle.
You can bank on that. What, verse 5, why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Numbers chapter 20 in the Living Bible, verse 5. And bring us here to this evil place. Where is the fertile land of wonderful crops, the figs, vines, and pomegranates you told us about? Why? There isn't even water enough to drink. Moses and Aaron turned away and went to the entrance by the, of the tabernacle where they fell face downward before the Lord. And the glory of Jehovah appeared to them. Again, when people are left, the, the, the woman I told her, I got my iron. There's been people that had to have said to her, girl, why would you even list, uh, uh, show interest in him? Why would it matter? You know, there's always people that's jealous of how God is getting, just when God get ready to elevate you, there's jealous people who come to you and try to talk you out of your blessing. And if you're not seasoned, if you don't know about the doctrine of leaving clean, you'll stay right there to appease them. But let them, let the devil give them somebody. They'll leave you high and dry. And when you say to them, but I, I, I didn't go with it. Well, hey, that's you. Uh-uh. But they went to the Lord. <laughs> and went, fell face downward before the Lord. And the glory. Mm, the glory of Jehovah appeared to them. God will always show up when things are rough and it seems like you can't get through it just remember the Holy Ghost will not allow Satan to bring you to your breaking point you're going through it you're facing it because God has anointed you to be able to go through it because if you couldn't go through it, he wouldn't allow it to even come toward you. Remember, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So don't think that because you're going through something that it's going to prosper against you. I know quite a few people who don't understand the doctrine of faith, but they try to say faith is what I think in my mind. That's faith. And I believe in that. No, that's a doggone lie. Faith is what God says. And you believe. You believe. Because God said. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, I disagree. Okay, are you sick? Have you been sick? If you were, did you want to be sick? Of course you didn't. So that shows you right there. You don't have any power. Other than what you have in Christ. The Lord appeared, the glory of the Lord appeared to them, to Moses and Aaron. It's a blessing where God bless you to be in fellowship with people who know God also. Instead of uh, that, that, that sister, that, that, that woman, the Lord allowed me to talk to earlier when I was asking him why. And he showed me because he wanted to check her. She was trying to tell me. I said to her, listen, you don't understand the season I'm in. We can't talk long because you don't understand the season I'm in. I'm in the season. I, I wasn't led to tell her, but I'll tell you. I'm in the season of waiting for God to establish me in the covenant of marriage. So guess what? God will send a daughter, but so will Satan. Satan won't just send an unsaved woman. He will send a carnal woman. Brothers, listen to this. Those of you, my brothers that are in ministry, you're over ministry and you're waiting for your wife. Remember these words. The devil will send even a woman to you who professes God with her lips. And if she see that that's where you are, she will mention his name to get you. She'll come in under the guise. <laughs> this woman, she even, uh, people write her and say, she, oh, you look like a first lady. Because she has the hat and she dresses neat and, and got her, worship, her, her service clothes. 
for, for the place of worship. That don't cut it. It don't. It don't matter what a sister wear on the outside. What's up with what's in her heart? It's good to fellowship with someone that knows God like you do. It's good to marry someone that knows God like you do so that when the spirit of the Lord appear that your spouse or your brother or your sister or the one you're walking with or fellowshipping with or, or ministering with or walking two by two with when the Holy Ghost show up and they're able also to know the Lord is in this place. Oh, that's awesome. Verse 7, and he said to Moses, get Aaron's rod. Then you and Aaron must summon the people. God, God will say gather the people because I want to I wanna flex for a minute. As they watch, speak to that rock over there and tell it to pour out its water. You will give them water from a rock enough for all the people and all their cattle. Now God knew what Moses was going to do. So Moses did as instructed. He took the rod from the place where it was kept before the Lord. Then Moses and Aaron summoned the people to come to gather at the rock. And he said to them, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water from this rock? Then Moses lifted the rod and struck the rock twice and water gushed out and the people and their cattle drink. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me. See, and did not sanctify me in the eyes of the people of Israel, you shall not bring them into the land I have promised them. God never did intend for Moses to bring Israel into the promised land because he knew Moses was going to run his course. Moses was only good for bringing them out of bondage and standing against Pharaoh and being used by God to do miracles and part the Red Sea and so forth. But he was not able or profitable or fit to lead the people into the promised land. Because right there at the rock is where he stumbled. God don't play. He took God's glory when he said, must we? And he disobeyed God when God says, speak to the rock. He struck it. Why? Because uh, sometime before that, when, when, when God was using him in the wilderness, God did tell him to strike the rock and water would gush out. And he did it. Sometimes when, when God is showing you something on this level and you get to that level, you bring this level's mentality with you, thinking that it makes you great over there. When no, 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 no. God will allow you to get to that level and show you that this won't work there it's good to have this so that in case you ever need it but no to get there you need something else something else when you walk with God he adds to you he adds Moses didn't make it to the promised land because of that God adds to you. We shouldn't go chasing no blessing. Mm -mm. Deuteronomy chapter 28 in the King James Version. Starting at verse 1. Scripture says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2 says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. The quid pro quo, the condition, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then the Lord began to minister through Moses. What would be added to the people if they did this? 
blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field, wherever you go. These blessings are going to come on you and overtake you. And when they overtake you, they travel with you. When you go and be around people and, 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 and these blessings have come on you and overtaken you, when you're around people, you can't help but to be a blessing. Why? Because that's what's emanating from you. That's why you don't see the Lord use me to ask anybody uh, or try to beat people up and make them give and share with the ministry. Mm -mm. On the TV screen, you'll see a cash app link and on Facebook, there'll be a cash app link in the description. And what I do, because the Lord is using me to work for him and walk with him and seek him and be used by him up this time of morning, being used by God to share the word. And I'm not even tired. The Lord just leave me to say, uh, let the Lord use you to, to sow into the ministry to help with the work that the ministry is doing in street and outreach to help other people. And I leave it there. Anyone whom blessings have come on them and overtake them, and I'm not talking about material things only, because there's some people God did give the means to be able to share, but first he has to give you the heart to share the means and the wisdom with what to share. This ministry don't tell people, pay your tithes, because this ministry understands, according to the word of God, that tithing, number one, it wasn't no law in the Old Testament. When it was first instituted, it wasn't no law. Abraham gave the Melchizedek on his own. Nobody told him to do that. And then there was a point in Deuteronomy where God told the people to take your tithe and eat it. So it wasn't money. Tithe in the Hebrew only means tenth. The tenth, tenth part, and tenth. Look up the Hebrew word miasro. That's what it means. And it had nothing to do with finances because in the Old Testament, money was not a commodity. Mm-mm. You told a person's wealth by their substance, by their cattle, by their minerals, by their grain. And when God told Malachi to go and talk to Israel, it was because Israel broke a covenant that they made with God in the book of Nehemiah chapter 10. So that was a, a conversation between God and Israel. Now, if it's in your heart, the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul said, let every man lay by him in store as God hath prospered him. Meaning that whatever God put in your heart to share concerning the collection of the saints, then you do that. No leader, nobody in ministry should know your income to know whether you are actually given a tenth of anything. They shouldn't. It's none of their business. But a lot of people put too much trust in man and woman and, and tell them everything. And some of you are too blind to understand that because the leader knows that you got two nickels, a dime, and maybe a couple of pennies, every time you turn around, they're asking you for something. You're giving it. And you think you'd be a blessing. No, you're not being a blessing to them. You're being a fool. Because that's what they want. They want your finances. And they work to get it from you. Wake up. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. It says in verse 4, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground, yes, Lord, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, K-I-N-E, meaning livestock, and the flocks of thy sheep. Read chapter 28, but when you get to verse 15, the switch happens there. If you don't hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord and do what he say, then all these curses shall come on thee and overtake thee. Moses didn't sanctify God's name. 
He said, must we? There's a lot of leaders that are saying, must we? People that put ministry in their name. Let's say the woman's name is Susie Q. Susie Q Ministries. So that's your ministry, not God's. So that's why the ministry would be struggling because if you put your name on it, God will step back and say, okay, let me see what you can do. Let me see your cloud. <laughs> Brothers put prophet so-and-so ministries. And then the cash app says, pay me and their name. <laughs> That's chasing filthy lucre. And the sad part is the people don't know no better. Why? Because they're not being taught. Not being taught. When God sent me to Indiana in 2016 to help a, a ministry, to pastor there for a, a little while, and the Lord led me to do Bible study. He led me to have my Strong's, few other resources, dictionaries, lexicons, more than one translation of scripture to sit at a table and say to the congregation, if, you, if God was right here and you had a question, what would it be? So that way you ask the question, we'll go in the Bible and tackle it. People got fed. Oh, they got fed. I was married before and the Lord led me in my second marriage. I know some people, oh, married twice? Yeah. Because everybody can't walk with you when you're walking with God. From the outside, people look and see how God got you set up, how strong you are in the Lord, and then the Lord tell you, let him in, and you do. And then the cross that they have to carry of their own, they can't do it. They wasn't doing it before they met you, and they sure were, ain't going to do it now. Of course, God will bless two people to meet when they're both lined up and some people have went on record as messing up after God blessed them. Look at Adam and Eve. They were lined up in the beginning. So uh, I was married twice. The second marriage, she was only here three months. And then the enemy pounced on her. He tore her up. Hmm. And so she was at one of the Bible studies the Lord led me to do. And she said, you know, I've never seen nobody do a Bible study like that, where it was actually question and answer. Because that's the whole point of that, that sharing, is because a lot of people think Bible study is me preaching to you. No, like what we're doing right now, this is not Bible study. This is the Lord using me to share a word, to relay something he put in my spirit is not much because I only got a couple of things written down and one verse and that's it. But all this teaching comes from being filled with the word and because the Lord uses, there's a teaching anointing strongly on my life and the Lord uses me to spend a lot of time in the word. But now if we was doing Bible study like God is going to use me to do on television and on Facebook, question and answer, where people could call in with questions and we tackle it right there, live on the air. Because God's people need to be informed. And a lot of them are not. God said, In Numbers, back in Numbers chapter 14. Actually, let's go in verse 4, the Living Bible. Let's go back to verse 1 again. Then all the people began weeping aloud, and they carried on all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of complaint against Moses and Aaron. Here they go again. The leader always takes the weight of the people. This is why 
you, if you're if you're in ministry, you can only marry someone in ministry. Your friends should be over ministry. Why? Because when you go through ministerial woes, it's a blessing to be able to talk to somebody and say, "Look, this is what I'm going through." If you're married to someone that's not in ministry, they ain't going to understand that. Some women, I'm telling you, you could be in a marriage, male or female. If you're a man and you're married to your wife, or if you're a woman of God and you're married to your husband, sometimes people will try to compete with God for your time and your attention. And you can't let that happen. Don't let anyone disrupt. Disrupt. <laughs> your fellowship and relationship with God. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how was my life you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table.